Hi everyone, Kelly here, and it's great to have you here. One of my favorite things about being in the NFT community is that we've kind of spawned our own language. If you participate in Web3 or crypto and you go on Twitter or Discord, where a lot of these crypto people hang out, you're probably gonna be seeing some of these words and have no idea what they mean. These phrases or words are not pertain to the space and we sometimes hear them in real life, IRL. And I was so confused when I first started and it was like everyone was talking in code nothing made sense. Uh, some of the lingo is really silly and it makes me laugh, but I love it because nobody else understands us. And when you find people who do, you just get this connection and there's a sense of belonging. And I find myself using these in real life sometimes because I probably spend way too much time on Discord. To begin, GM, it's a greeting. It stands for good morning. So it's optimistic, it's cheerful. It basically just means welcome. And another one that you may see a lot is D-Y-O-R, do your own research. So no matter what anyone tells you in this space, no matter what alpha you get, you've got to do your due diligence and do your own research when making any decisions. And what is alpha, you may ask? Alpha is best described as intel. It's useful information that the rest of the market hasn't found out about yet. Now that's different from a shill. NFT shilling is when someone promotes an NFT and encourages others to invest, yet they have a financial interest in favorable results. So they do it to pump their own bag. Any information that you see or hear is NFA, not financial advice. DYOR and don't invest more than you can lose. Degen is short for degenerate. So degens are people who buy into projects without doing their own research. And trust me, I'm guilty of going into degen mode sometimes, aping into signals and FOMOing into pumps. So aping, you're making a purchase that is irrational out of FOMO. So FOMO, FOMO is fear of missing out. So we use this in real life too. It's the anxiety that you feel when all your friends are going to a super fun party and you think you'll miss out on all the fun, which doesn't really happen to me anymore because FOMO has effed me over too many times when I go out and I realize that I'd much rather stay home. Well, the same goes in the NFT space. Don't buy something because of FOMO. Don't act on impulse due to the fear of missing out. A lot of times you just end up buying the top. And the opposite emotion to FOMO would be FUD. Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. People have FUD or spread FUD. And when there's FUD, there's bound to be some paper hands. Someone who immediately sells an asset off at the first sight of bad news, and usually they sell it for way too low of a price. And the opposite of paper hands is diamond hands. Someone who holds on to an asset through price volatility and FUD. They don't care about the floor. Floor price is essentially the lowest listed price for an NFT of a certain collection. So when someone sweeps the floor, they're buying a bunch of the cheapest item in the collection, usually done by a whale. And a whale is someone with a large amount of capital. And usually whales have blue chip NFTs. A blue chip refers to an NFT that retains high value despite market swings, like CryptoPunks or BIC. And honestly, sometimes I'm just trying to flip my way towards a blue chip. Flipping refers to buying items at low prices and selling quickly for a profit. And I think the best way to do that is to mint. A lot of new NFT collections pop up every day. They offer collectors an opportunity to become the first buyer of their NFT. And that's a process known as minting. And when you mint or perform any transactions on the blockchain, you have to pay gas. 
which can be simply thought of as a transaction fee. And the tricky thing is gas is variable. So for example, when you're transacting on the Ethereum network, it goes up a lot when there's a lot of activity and goes down when there's not. So be careful because gas can really affect the price of your NFT, whether you're minting or buying and selling on OS, which stands for OpenSea. It's a widely used secondary market for NFTs. Now, most of the NFT collections out there are PFP collections, which stands for profile picture. PFP has a certain type of aesthetic and style and can be used as an avatar, like we have CryptoPunks, uh, Border Yacht Club, Doodles. And with all these collections out there, how do I pick the right one? Well, the first thing that I look for is a docs team. A team is docs when they put out identifying information about themselves and most of the time it could be their photo or a full name, maybe their resume or even their LinkedIn profiles. And when they're doxed, there's less of a chance for that project to be a rug since their identities are known. A rug is basically a scam when a seemingly legit project suddenly disappears with all the money immediately after launch. And even if not immediate, if the team is delivering zero and there are no updates on what they're doing to carry out their roadmap, then it's a soft rug. Another thing that I look for when learning about new projects is their AMA, Ask Me Anything. They're usually voice chat sessions held on Twitter or Discord where you can chat with the team and basically ask them anything. And from these sessions, you can usually tell if a project is NGMI, not gonna make it. You can also be labeled as NGMI, like if you still believe crypto is just a big scam, NGMI. On the other hand, a status that we all strive to achieve is GMI, gonna make it. So when you're feeling bullish, when you have conviction and are super confident that the project will moon, just hold on. Hold on. <laughs> so when you're feeling bullish, when you have conviction and are super confident that a project will moon, just hold on, hold on for dear life. Cuz, whack me, we're all gonna make it. Let's go! <laughs> Hope the video was helpful to you. So if you'd like to see more, like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.